Hey, a uh, real camera. Hi, my name is Rebecca. This is what people want to see. And I am a super host. Complete lunatics. <laughs> this woman, Rebecca, she said that she was the host of this place. But she we have one final surprise for you that I think you're going to love. If anyone's out there watching, please, please help us. Please stop! Think of all the hits you'll get. <laughs> Look at her. She's harmless. Uh, all right, Rebecca, uh, we're gonna start off with a friendly introduction, like a, hi, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a super host. Do I look at you or at the camera? What's up, guys? My name is Teddy. I'm Claire, and welcome to another episode of Superhost. We are staying in the most gorgeous home up in the mountains. It's so quiet here. This super host uses the name Betty Lou 52 has a nearly spotless record. It's actually Rebecca. Oh, so you're neither Betty nor Lou. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? You think you come out this far to get away from all those crazy people, but then you get to this house and you realize that the host might be even crazier than those people you left behind. Well, I don't want to get in the way of your trip. Wouldn't want to get a bad review. <laughs> That is the craziest shit I've ever seen. We gotta get more of her. Okay, uh, roll camera. Hi, my name is Rebecca. This is what people wanna see. And I am a super host. Complete lunatics. <laughs> this woman, Rebecca, she said that she was the host of this place. But she we have one final surprise for you that I think you're going to love. If anyone's out there watching, please, please help us. Please, ah! Think of all the hits you'll get. <laughs> Look at her. She's harmless. Uh, all right, Rebecca, uh, we're gonna start off with a friendly introduction, like a, hi, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a super host. Do I look at you or at the camera? What's up, guys? My name is Teddy. I'm Claire, and welcome to another episode of Superhost. We are staying in the most gorgeous home up in the mountains. It's so quiet here. This super host uses the name Betty Lou 52 has a nearly spotless record. It's actually Rebecca. Oh, so you're neither Betty nor Lou. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? You think you come out this far to get away from all those crazy people, but then you get to this house and you realize that the host might be even crazier than those people you left behind. Well, I don't want to get in the way of your trip. Wouldn't want to get a bad review. <laughs> That is the craziest shit I've ever seen. We gotta get more of her. Okay, uh, roll camera. Hi, my name is Rebecca. This is what people wanna see. And 
I am a super host. Complete lunatics. <laughs> this woman, Rebecca, she said that she was the host of this place. But she's not. We have one final surprise for you that I think you're going to love. If anyone's ever watching, please, please, my boss. Please stop! Think of all the hits you'll get. Look at her. She's harmless. Uh, all right, Rebecca, uh, we're gonna start off with a friendly introduction, like a, hi, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a super host. Do I look at you or at the camera? What's up, guys? My name is Teddy. I'm Claire, and welcome to another episode of Superhost. We are staying in the most gorgeous home up in the mountains. It's so quiet here. This super host uses the name Betty Lou 52 has a nearly spotless record. It's actually Rebecca. Oh, so you're neither Betty nor Lou. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? You think you come out this far to get away from all those crazy people, but then you get to this house and you realize that the host might be even crazier than those people you left behind. Well, I don't want to get in the way of your trip. Wouldn't want to get a bad review. <laughs> That is the craziest shit I've ever seen. We gotta get more of her. Okay, uh, roll camera. Hi, my name is Rebecca. This is what people want to see. And I am a super host. Complete lunatics. <laughs> this woman, Rebecca, she said that she was the host of this place, but she's not. We have one final surprise for you that I think you're going to love. If anyone's ever watching, please, please help us. Please, Think of all the hits you'll get. <laughs> Look at her. She's harmless. Uh, all right, Rebecca, uh, we're gonna start off with a friendly introduction, like a, hi, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a super host. Do I look at you or at the camera? What's up, guys? My name is Teddy. I'm Claire, and welcome to another episode of Superhost. We are staying in the most gorgeous home up in the mountains. It's so quiet here. This super host uses the name Betty Lou 52 has a nearly spotless record. It's actually Rebecca. Oh, so you're neither Betty nor Lou. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? You think you come out this far to get away from all those crazy people, but then you get to this house and you realize that the host might be even crazier than those people you left behind. Well, I don't want to get in the way of your trip. Wouldn't want to get a bad review. <laughs> That is the craziest shit I've ever seen. We gotta get more of her. Okay, uh, roll camera. Hi, my name is Rebecca. This is what people want to see. And I am a super host. Complete lunatics. <laughs> this woman, 
and Rebecca, she said that she was the host of this place, but she said we have one final surprise for you that I think you're going to love. If anyone's out there watching, please, please help us. Please stop! Think of all the hits you'll get. <laughs> Look at her. She's harmless. Uh, all right, Rebecca, uh, we're gonna start off with a friendly introduction, like a, hi, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a super host. Do I look at you or at the camera? What's up, guys? My name is Teddy. I'm Claire, and welcome to another episode of Superhost. We are staying in the most gorgeous home up in the mountains. It's so quiet here. This super host uses the name Betty Lou 52 has a nearly spotless record. It's actually Rebecca. Oh, so you're neither Betty nor Lou. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? You think you come out this far to get away from all those crazy people, but then you get to this house and you realize that the host might be even crazier than those people you left behind. Well, I don't want to get in the way of your trip. Wouldn't want to get a bad review. <laughs> That is the craziest shit I've ever seen. We gotta get more of her. Okay, uh, roll camera. Hi, my name is Rebecca. This is what people wanna see. And I am a super host. Complete lunatics. <laughs> this woman, Rebecca, she said that she was the host of this place, but she said we have one final surprise for you that I think you're going to love. If anyone's out there watching, please, please help us. Please stop! Think of all the hits you'll get. <laughs> Look at her. She's harmless. Uh, all right, Rebecca, uh, we're gonna start off with a friendly introduction, like a, hi, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a super host. Do I look at you or at the camera? What's up, guys? My name is Teddy. I'm Claire, and welcome to another episode of Superhost. We are staying in the most gorgeous home up in the mountains. It's so quiet here. This super host uses the name Betty Lou 52 has a nearly spotless record. It's actually Rebecca. Oh, so you're neither Betty nor Lou. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? You think you come out this far to get away from all those crazy people, but then you get to this house and you realize that the host might be even crazier than those people you left behind. Well, I don't want to get in the way of your trip. Wouldn't want to get a bad review. <laughs> That is the craziest shit I've ever seen. We gotta get more of her. Okay, uh, roll camera. Hi, my name is Rebecca. This is what people want to see. And I am a super host. Complete lunatics. <laughs> this woman, Rebecca, she said that she was the host of this place, but she said we have one final surprise for you that I think you're going to love. 
If anyone is out there watching, please, please help us. Please stop! Think of all the hits you'll get. Look at her. She's harmless. Uh, all right, Rebecca, uh, we're gonna start off with a friendly introduction, like a, hi, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a super host. Do I look at you or at the camera? What's up, guys? My name is Teddy. I'm Claire, and welcome to another episode of Superhost. We are staying in the most gorgeous home up in the mountains. It's so quiet here. This super host, who's the name Betty Lou 52, has a nearly spotless record. It's actually Rebecca. Oh, so you're neither Betty nor Lou. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? You think you come out this far to get away from all those crazy people, but then you get to this house and you realize that the host might be even crazier than those people you left behind. Well, I don't want to get in the way of your trip. Wouldn't want to get a bad review. <laughs> That is the craziest shit I've ever seen. We gotta get more of her. Okay, uh, roll camera. Hi, my name is Rebecca. This is what people wanna see. And I am a super host. Complete lunatics. <laughs> this woman, Rebecca, she said that she was the host of this place, but she's not. We have one final surprise for you that I think you're going to love. If anyone's out there watching, please, please help us. Please, stop! Think of all the hits you'll get. <laughs> Look at her. She's harmless. Welcome to another edition of Dissecting Horror, the show on Dread Central, where we connect with the movers and shakers, the up and comers of today's best horror, both mainstream and indie. Talk about films that you're excited to see with people you're excited to see in them. Uh, these are the creatives in front of the camera, behind the camera, making it all possible. I'm your host this evening, Josh Milliken from Dread Central. And tonight, it's all about Superhost. Superhost streaming now on Shudder exclusively today. Superhost, I've seen it. It was a great film. Uh, and there's a lot to talk about. And, and luckily, uh, I'm here with the perfect people to talk about it with. Those of you watching on Facebook and Twitch, go on and submit your questions in the comment section. We'll get to them in a little bit. But let me tell you who we're here with. We are here with Brandon Christensen, the writer and director of Superhost. How are you, man? I'm good. Thanks for having us. This is, uh, this is really cool. It's our pleasure. Let me tell you a little bit about yourself uh, to kick things off. You, you are also the uh, director of Stillborn and Z, uh, two incredible films uh, that, that were also on Shudder. Uh, you, you are, in case you didn't know, you're, you're also a producer of It Stains the Sand Red, which is a, a film that I, I love a lot. Uh, and and your, your most recent film, Superhost, just came out, and, and we're really excited to talk to you about it. So thank you for being here. Uh, we're also here with Clayton Moore, who is the cinematographer. How are you, big guy? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. And uh, from one uh, guy who takes his background seriously to another guy who clearly takes his background seriously, 
well done you know i appreciate the the color tones and the the you know uh, attention to detail so i'm really excited to talk to you uh you know about superhost uh and this you know it's almost like becoming a subgenre in and of itself a daytime horror you know uh, keep keeping it scary with the lights on so you know i'm excited to uh a dive into that uh, and, and I'm excited to also talk about uh, Saints of Sand Red, which you worked with Brandon on. And, and, you know, like I was saying during Tech Check, it's just one of those films where I always find myself recommending every time someone says they've seen it all or what's something that, you know, maybe I haven't seen that I should check out. I'm always like, go see a Saints of Sand Red because that movie is just phenomenal. So uh, thank you for being here, Clayton. Uh, we're also here with uh, Curtis David Harder. Uh, how's it going, man? Good, man. How's it going? Uh, it's going really good. It's going really good. You are a producer on Superhost. So uh, really excited to talk to you about that and your role in that. But uh, horror fans may also know your name. It might be ringing a bell because you're the writer and director of Spiral. Now, we're not talking about the latest reboot in the Saw franchise. We're talking about 2019 Spiral, uh, which was on Shudder. Actually, one of my top 10 films of 2019 a uh, really fantastic film and I know we're here to talk about Superhost but I can't go I, I can't not mention Spiral uh, what a great film uh, I thought it was members of our community thought it was and how great it is to have you here so welcome yeah so good to be here um yeah awesome. Spiral's also it's been cool to work with Shutter on a bunch of different stuff so yeah so. yeah and you know during the tech check you guys had some great things to say about Shutter so we'll talk about them too I, I'm a fan of Shutter as well so let's talk about how great Shutter's last Certainly not least is Gracie Gillum, who played Rebecca, uh, the star of Superhost. Uh, oh my God, how are you, Rebecca? Or, <laughs> Gracie, uh, it's, it's tough because you've got the bandana on and Rebecca wears the bandana. Not a white stripes bandana. Yeah, it, it, it's oh, awesome, God. it's awesome. Uh, just in case you Thank didn't you. know, just in case you didn't know, because you might not know this, uh, you're Sarge and Z Nation. Uh, you played Melissa and Stolen in Plain Sight. You're in the Vampire Diary, Scream Queen, Supernatural, Tales of Halloween, where you met Barbara Crampton, by the way, at a panel, in, in case you didn't know. And also uh, some kind of hate, all great shows and films that uh, we've championed on Dread Central, that we love at Dread Central. So having you here, uh, is a treat and a thrill for us based on your uh, filmography alone. Uh, having you here as the host, uh, or as the star of Superhost, as the Superhost, uh, is really fun because people are going to be talking about Rebecca for a long time. Great character. Uh, I can't wait to circle back around to you in a bit uh, and, and talk a little bit about what makes that character tick because she, she ticks uh in a really fun way but really excited to have you here thank you for being here thank you josh yes thanks for having me i'm gonna start oh it's our pleasure believe me believe me i'm gonna start as i normally do uh with with the writer director you know it's your baby it's your big day too i mean this really is uh you know your your opening it's your premiere night um you know, we live in an era where red carpets are, you know, not happening right now, but it's a celebration of Superhost. So congratulations on, on Superhost. Like I said, I've seen it. I loved it. it. These panels are so much fun when I actually love the film that we're talking about. So I'm really excited to talk about <laughs> Superhost. But to segue into it, it's worth talking about your first two films, Stillborn and Z. Uh, if only for the fact that they are so different than Superhost. With Stillborn and Z, you have, well, first of all, I'm kind of scared to even delve into those films with you because uh, my wife's currently 34 mm -hmm. weeks pregnant. So I'm about to be dealing with all kinds of uh, crazy fears uh, that you explored in films like Stillborn and Z. But, you know, you went from doing these really dark, uh, almost like modern American Gothic films to doing something very bright and, and uh, straightforward horror comedy, you know, that really goes off the rails. Uh, does this uh, indicate a new chapter in your filmmaking? Is it just that you've always wanted to, to spread your wings? Uh, let's talk about Superhost uh, and how you arrived there from what came before it. 
Um, I mean, there wasn't any sort of intention on doing anything particular once I finished Z, but, you know, Stillborn was based off of, uh, you know, having a baby. And then Z was based off of having a kindergartner that was kind of going out into the world for the first time. And so when I finished that up, uh, you know, it does when you are pulling stories from your own life and you're kind of digging in deep for certain sequences and stuff like that, that are kind of personal. Um, it was kind of a, 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 I wanted to get away from the personal stuff for a second, just have a little bit of fun. You know, I think uh, there's just, uh, it, it is, it's just kind of refreshing to step away from the tortured mom and go into something that is more comical and just able to be, you know, like you said, brighter and, and, and things like that. So um, it's not, I don't think it's a new chapter or anything. I'll definitely be doing, you know, once my kids get to an age where something interesting happens, I'm definitely going to find a way to make it scary. <laughs> Good to know that, uh, you know, parenthood is a, is a great uh, a wellspring for potential horror movies <laughs> yeah, uh, as okay. I, as I stand on out. the precipice. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty scary. Uh, yeah, well, I'm excited. From... I'm sorry, Curtis? Oh, I was just going to say, this kind of came from a, an experience of yours about Brandon as well in a different way. Yeah, oh, yeah? I, was, I, I was in Toronto for a film festival, Blood in the Snow, and uh, I, I had an Airbnb, and when I checked in, I went to the bathroom, and uh, the toilet didn't flush, and so I'm just like kind of panicking. There's no plunger, there's nothing, so I have if to If you text. tell me you pulled teeth out of it, no, that's I, it. <laughs> I'm gonna just... No, that, that was an embellishment added later, but the, pretty much the same thing happened. I text the, the, the host, he sent security up because it was a nice like condo, condo building. Uh, the security guy couldn't do anything. So he sent the host in and he had bought a plunger and he comes in, you know, plunger on his shoulder. And, and it was just this awkward interaction where I'm in this guy's house or his, uh, his apartment. And I'm just like, you know, we're trying to have this weird small talk. And, the, and it's just like, what, are, what is happening? Like, I don't know this person. He doesn't know me. I'm paying him to stay in his place. And that was definitely kind of the germ of the idea of just like, you know, we put ourselves in these positions where we are, we're, we're just super vulnerable in someone else's place that they know better than us. They, you know, and it just sort of sp spiraled from that, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's worth, it's worth freaking out about, mm -hmm. you know, that we, we take it all, you know, in such strides, same thing with ride sharing. It's like, hi, yeah. stranger, of course, I'm going to get in your car, you know, yeah. uh, Hey, stranger. Yeah, I, I'm going to sleep in your house, you know, knowing full well that you have the keys, you know, and totally. you can come in anytime you want. Uh, no, that's interesting. I like that it's it has a, a, a foot in truth because that, that makes it more authentic. And I think it's something we can all relate to. Uh, not even to mention the um, the the presentation of it, the, the media of it, where you incorporate this new uh, YouTube style, you know, the, uh, the uh, YouTuber, the vlogger style, which is something we're going to get into right now as i look at you clayton how you doing man uh yeah first of all let's talk a little bit you know i, I said brighter when i was talking to brandon like right now and and i almost feel like i almost feel like we're, we're starting to identify a new subgenre with films like uh, midsummer uh, and some others where you create this terror in broad daylight you know so much of horror seems tied to nighttime and darkness uh, yet everything about Superhost is well lit, uh, you know, cameras there, the lighting's, you know, great, and everything happens during the day in, in full view. Uh, talk about your approach as a cinematographer to creating this bright horror. Well, that, that was a concern of mine from the beginning was that it's, we're not going to have any of those. I mean, there are some night scenes and stuff, but it's, it is predominantly daytime. So it's like, how do we make this scary? And I, I think in the end, we, we, I kind of just let it go to the characters. And I said, well, the characters are pretty scary in, in themselves. And it's really, I mean, this movie, like we were saying, it's very timely in that we are sharing these personal spaces with strangers and putting a lot of faith in the system. And, um, you know, it just begs the question, what if? And so I, I thought it was fun to, to kind of just, you know, just um, explore that question of what if these people are insane? And, um, you know, we, we did some things that to darken it a little bit where we could, but it was really about keeping it nice and clean, trying to make it a little more invisible. We didn't want to get too flashy and uh, just letting the characters really take us on that journey with them. I would say most of the whole shooting was just blocking Beatles from being on the actors. Yeah. <laughs> there was a weird thing going on up there with just swarms uh, of Beatles. Maybe you, 
Maybe you should have let him in. That would have been a whole nother <laughs> creepy uh, subtext to it. People yeah, would have been have talking about the, the genius of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure. The characters, yeah. Uh, of course, you got to talk about the characters in a film, a single setting with only four cast members. Uh, you know, every single one of them had to be amazing to pull this off. I can't say any one was better than the other because the characters were all so diverse and uh, unique. Uh, that said, Gracie, oh my God, <laughs> you killed it, pun intended, hearty, hearty, hearty. Uh, Rebecca is nuts. Uh, Rebecca's nuts. Uh, you, you, that's not a spoiler. You, you see the trailer, you know that Rebecca's nuts. She is the super host. What was up with Rebecca? I mean, people are already lighting up the uh, the comments. They want to know where your inspiration come from. And yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's what I want to know too. How much of it was in the script? How much of it was the direction that you got from Brandon? And how much of it was something that you just reached in and came up with on your own? Where, who is Rebecca? Um. Well, I kind of, I started with reading the script when I first got the script in my inbox. That was the first thing I did. And I just did kind of basic character analysis and I like it's pretty clear that this person is suffering from being a psychopath and so I started with research I tried to find um interviews with people who had been admitted to psychopathy who were willing to be interviewed which is like not that many people I wanted to find non-criminals that were talking about their experience with it because I didn't think that Rebecca seemed like someone who had been killing for long um mm -hmm. and then I did of course read some interviews of, of people who have already been incarcerated who were um, killers. And then after a point of research, I kind of decided like, okay, so I have a basic idea of what this is. Like, how do I find the hook as an actor? And I don't really have that much of an obligation for this to be psychologically accurate. I do think I, I did that a bit, but mostly I had an obligation for this to be like a really entertaining and scary villain. Um, and so I kind of, I was like, based on the age of this person, what does she learn to mimic? And she seems like someone who's not been super socialized. I don't think she was really in school. I think she probably like did had a violent outburst that got her taken out of school. So where is she getting the inspiration for like how to act like a person who is feeling emotions? And it's like kind of social media culture, like videos like that. And so mm -hmm. like, like really, really excited and like, 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 you know, if like, if you don't know what other people are thinking or feeling based on their faces and like based on being able to put yourself in their shoes, then like, you're just going to kind of stay here and try to figure out like, okay, nobody else is saying anything. It's my turn to say anything. <laughs> like, um, so I kind of just tried to find like a Dana Carvey style hook for the character. <laughs> I mean, mission accomplished. Uh, that's so wonderful. Uh, Brandon, how lucky are you to have this lead who did all this research and uh, put together this character who, who's just, uh, I mean, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, we had a Zoom call uh, shortly after I sent her the, the script and, and she, you know, you could tell she had done her research because just in the short period that she had it, she's, you know, we were talking about Z and stillborn. So she went back and watched those just to get a sense of my style and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, he wanted to do the movie. I was like, fuck, this is scary. He wants me to be scary. Like those <laughs> monsters. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was like, it was just one of those things that happens where it's just, had you cast someone else, the movie would be completely different. Like she brought her own For thing sure. to it. And I don't know, I don't know what it would have been before. You know, I, I wanted someone that was someone that you would love. It's like, you know, it is kind of based around the creep idea of a killer that you, you empathize with and you like, and you enjoy watching, even though he's such a bad person. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just kind of finding someone that through everything and through the fakeness, you can still actually sort of empathize with. And, and I think Gracie did such a good job. Yeah, you know, I you, we're on the same wavelength because I was I was going to mention creep, you know, it, when we're talking about Gracie's character, you know, and yeah, you know, there there is a similarity to that character, uh, uh, the Duplass, uh, Mr. Duplass is mm -hmm. just so likable and so nuts, uh, and that, that that's great to know that that was uh, in your mind because that's one of the few uh, examples I could think of when I tried yeah. to think of a character similar to Rebecca, but you know, Rebecca is still so unique and it's not just that, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Wolfman in, in mm -hmm. Creep is, is, a, is a man and you're a woman. It has to do with this whole uh, different uh, approach to psychopathy, like you said, uh, just a well done, mission accomplished 100%. Uh, Curtis, haven't forgotten about you. You know, Sorry. we're here to talk about 
super host, but but like I said before, we can't not you know talk a little bit about Spiral because uh, uh, except for the fact that um, you know the, this new Saw movie came out called Spiral, I feel like uh, people slowly found out about Spiral, uh, your film released on Shutter in 2019. I feel like it's really uh, gained a lot of momentum and respect and and uh, a genuine cult following. It was such a unique film, such a really well hidden twist. A real organic flow to it. Uh, it was just amazing. So, you know, congratulations on that. And just wanted to to get your your take on you know the life of Spiral since its release and kind of ha- how that plays into you arriving as a producer of Superhost. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been really cool to see it kind of find an audience with, with Shutter. The way that Shutter keeps growing and and the subscriber base just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Like I think right around the time that. Uh, Spiral came out they just hit like a million subscribers so it was really cool to kind of see them go from kind of our our first uh collaboration with with Stillborn when Shutter was relatively new I think it only been out for maybe a couple years um to to grow into what what it is today so I think like having being able to be a part of that and and having a film in these kind of different in genre worlds it's it's really fun to see um kind of how far it can spread just online yeah absolutely um yeah and leading into superhost i mean brennan and i i've I've been involved with all three films um and producing for him is always like so great he's um just a wonderful collaborator and and jumping into this one we were in the middle of the pandemic so this was our first our first kind of foray into trying to shoot with all of these restrictions and and kind of working around the safety concerns and so it was definitely a unique challenge compared to some of the, the previous shoots we've done because we were kind of trying to figure out ways to, to scale it back so that we can kind of keep our distance from people and not having a ton of people in, in one house. So it's definitely challenging in that way. Yeah, yeah. That is, um, Curtis just did way too many jobs. Just yeah. all of the jobs. <laughs> it's like if there was a job that we didn't do doing, yep. we do our yeah. executive producer. <laughs> Well, that's what you got to do, man. You got to wear all the hats. And, you know, I mean, obviously I noticed that it was, this was a small cast. Obviously I noticed that it's primarily a single location film, but it never even occurred to me while watching it that it was because uh, it was being produced uh, under, you know, the COVID-19 uh, era filmmaking. And, and that's, you know, something that we were talking about a little bit in Tech Check as well. Like, you made this film last October, uh, less than a year ago, uh, in the height of a pandemic, you know, right before a surge. And we were talking about how you did it all with a COVID compliance officer and everything. Uh, you guys want to talk about what it was like uh, making a movie in this unique time, especially since you all have experience with filmmaking before the pandemic. Uh, Yeah, I mean, the big thing, if you watch the credits, the cast list is really short, but so is the crew. Like the crew was literally six people. There was Clayton, uh, there was our AC, Taylor Miller, then our Grip and Gaffer, Chanston and Alfredo. Then there was Jenny, the makeup girl, and uh, Scotty on sound. And then we had our COVID officer, Edgar, and that was it. You know, so every other film I've been on has been, you know, 20, 25 people that are all kind of running around doing different jobs. But um, all those jobs that you normally have filled fell on to everybody you know you'd have the Alfredo the grip would be doing slate for us and uh, Kurt and I would be doing scheduling and AD stuff in between every scene so it was I mean that was kind of the biggest sacrifice because a lot of the budget probably around 15 percent of the budget had to go towards testing and masking the COVID officer all these things that normally we haven't had to deal with so um that was just the biggest challenge was just trying to wrap your head around what were the bare essentials that you could get away with and make this film still, you know, of a a certain quality. Um, But yeah, I mean, you know, I'd worked with this entire crew for years on commercials and things like that. So it was fun to kind of come back home and and do something with them and, and put them in a, you know, a different position We're we're in a narrative film now and I'm able to kind of share that with them. So that was pretty special. Yeah, we couldn't have done it without the crew, honestly, because without them being willing to jump in like they did and and switch hats at a moment's notice, it just wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have flowed. Uh, it would have taken way too long. Um, but, you know, like like Brandon said, we have been working with the same crew. Uh, I came up through film school with all these guys. So we're kind of used to that, where it's like, if something needs to be done, you just help out and you do it. It doesn't matter what your job title is. Um, 
so you know we were very lucky to have kind of our a team like that mm -hmm. and and that really helped us yeah Kurt, you could talk about sag because they were they were the other kind of covid thing yeah i mean uh sag uh, the actors union had a lot of requirements um so i think like in terms of just like the testing and, and everything like they they want to keep their actors safe of course and, and when you're shooting in a, in a time that's like you're trying to isolate everybody we want to bring all these people together how do you do that safely so it was definitely a challenge kind of making sure that we were ticking off all the boxes and, and making sure we respect all the rules and not even yeah. just because there's a union asking but for our own personal concerns as well it was also Absolutely. hard to figure out sorry it was it was hard to figure out what the rules were and everything because well they're probably changing every day yeah exactly yeah. so you're kind of chasing uh, these rules that are ever changing and and just locking them in and being like okay sag we're we need approval to go that was kind of you know it's it is pretty last minute and so you're just kind of prepping everything assuming that it'll work and you know once 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 you're kind of in their radar then they start putting you know they they get you through and everything and so so it's just scary when you're when you're leading up and you're like we're bringing we're bringing these people in we don't know what's happening so that's always scary yeah 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 i mean definitely definitely uh bringing bringing the experience to light with these uh stories you know i, I said during the tech check i'll say it again i, I love covid compliance officers you know more work here you know uh, a few more steps to the process but I mean, that's what we need if that's what it takes to get movies made again. If that's what it takes to see films like Superhost, uh, I'm all for it. So, you know, I, I say, you know, God bless the COVID compliance officers. Let's let's treat them right because they've got a tough job to do. But, uh, you know, uh, that, that's what we need to do right now. So cool, cool. Glad to hear. Uh, Gracie, uh, got to mention one thing. It might even be kind of like the elephant in the room because, you know, uh, we've mentioned, uh, we've said the name Barbara Crampton, but we haven't really talked about the fact that, you know, Barbara Crampton has a small but wonderful role in Superhost and you guys go toe to toe. I don't want to give any spoilers because you, you got to check it out. Uh, but it, I mean, okay, Gracie, you're playing this this character Rebecca, who who could become iconic. I'm not kidding. This could be a, a cosplay situation, a, a sequels. <laughs> who, who knows? For you to be going toe to toe with a uh, horror queen Barbara Crampton, I mean, what was that like? Was it as amazing to to produce as it was to watch? It was so fun to work with her. Like just so so fun. Um, I will say, like, one of my favorite, like, things that we got to do together was, um, oh, God, what can I, what can I say? Um, there was a moment where our faces were very close and we're kind of mimicking each other in a way that definitely expelled particles. And so, like, <laughs> that was one of the, like, I don't know, like, that moment was one of the most fun bits of acting, like, just, like, so creepy, weird, like, matching this person's energy in this bizarre way, but at the same time, just, like, a little bit in the back of your mind, you're just, like, God, I hope I was, like, able to be safe at this hotel, like, I, like, <laughs> up a mountain from Vegas, but, like, there was people who were comfortable having weddings in October 2020 who were coming probably from Vegas who were staying in the hotel, and they didn't want to wear masks, and you're being as safe as you can because you want to keep the crew safe, but you're living in a hotel, right. and, like, it was, like, I really fucking hope I don't hurt anybody by doing this acting thing. <laughs> but, yeah, well, wonderful, wonderful to get to work with her, um, hopefully just for the first time. Uh, yeah, hopefully, because I would love to, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, it, it would be great to see the two of you on, on screen together, because not only did you go toe to toe, you had great chemistry, and uh, I, I'm just really, really just so impressed with your performance and, uh, you know, what you brought to the table. I, I'd love to see you do more and more, and I'd love to see you do more with someone like Barbara Crampton, because you guys clicked so well. Uh, it, your moments together are really some of the high points of the film. Uh, and it's a film with a lot of high points, so congratulations on that. It's so great to hear. Uh, we do have some questions from our viewers starting to stack up. Want to get to as many of them as possible. But before that, uh, another thing that kind of came up in our our tech check. Uh, you know, it's a good time for me to kind of a. Uh, you know, talk to talk to the panelists and get some ideas, things to talk about. Uh, Y'all were saying some really great things about Shutter, uh, and you know, Brandon, I know that your first two films came out on Shutter. Uh, Curtis, uh, you know, uh, Spiral came out on Shutter. Uh, Clayton, you've been working on these films that have really been championed by Shutter. I, I think it's a great uh, a service and a great uh, institution. I just uh, thought it'd be nice if you guys shared your experiences working with that company. 
Yeah, I mean, they, I, I feel like you can't really look at my body of work without having Shudder in the conversation, you know, I think they gave, um, they gave us an opportunity with Stillborn and they, uh, I, I just, they didn't buy Stillborn originally, a company called Vertical Entertainment did, but they bought the streaming rights. And when they put it out, they put it out on Mother's Day and it was just like, oh, wow, they totally get what this movie is. Like, you know, there's kind of an irony to that. And then they did the same thing with Z and it was just like, we just, they just sort of got the movies, which was, you know, evident by not just, you know, them, them taking it, but what they were doing with it and how they presented it to the world and pushed it and everything. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm incredibly comfortable with them now. Like I can call them up and everything and they're, you know, they're, they're always enthusiastically answering. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that they've helped me sort of define my filmmaking career to date. And, you know, I think there'll probably be more in the future, but I, you know, I love Shutter. I'm wearing the shirt. Bam. There's a plug. Shutter shirt. <laughs> Shutter's great. What, what do the rest of you guys think? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just cool that it exists because I think that there are not yeah. to say anything poorly about other streamers, but it's shut up. Uh, horror tends to sometimes get overlooked by these other services that are doing a broader scope of, of types of films. So, so having Shutter just solely focused on kind of curating really cool films and from new filmmakers and, and veteran filmmakers, it, it's just mm -hmm. awesome, to, awesome that they exist and that they've found the success that they have so far. Totally. There's a reason they're growing so fast. I don't have a ton Fantastic. of experience working with them directly, but like my favorite thing about horror fandom is that it's really a community. And I don't think that there's really that to be found in a lot of other communities. Totally. I love that there's like a centralized place to find things like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, you know, uh, we're huge fans of, of Shutter at, at Dread Central and, you know, you, you, you nailed it when you said community. I mean, that's what, that's the engine of horror. That's why you have horror conventions, uh, where, whereas you don't have, uh, you know, uh, rom-com rom conventions. I mean, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe you do. <laughs> maybe you do. I don't know. Not as many as, uh, you know, there are horror conventions, but uh -huh. yeah, I mean, uh, fandom is wonderful shutter's done a great job of curating to to that rabid horror fan out there as i hope we do as well on dread central with our content always you know looking to bring you more of a great original stuff and uh, it's great it's a great great time to be a horror fan great time to be totally. alive but yeah uh, i've always been a big fan of shutter definitely worth the price of subscription see great films like spiral like stillborn like z and like superhost Let's get to some of these questions from some of these people who've taken time this evening to join us to talk about Superhost. First question is from Gary, and it's for Gracie. And uh, Gary wants to know, did you draw uh, inspiration from anywhere for your character in Superhost? You were amazing. I know you mentioned Dana Carvey. Anyone else? Just in the finding the hook, the Dana Carvey. Um, no, I mean, I definitely watched Creep. Um, I was, it was, it was, I guess, more just like, taking my own natural, um, sometimes not knowing why everyone is doing the same thing and I'm not doing it and why is everyone doing the same thing? And then just ramping that up without the empathy, like without the ability to be like, oh, it's coming from this place. So just sort of the, the being baffled at like why everybody acts the same and then like being expected to act the same as, an, as anybody else. Um, I don't know, I guess like it was it was um, more just like trying to find what was creepy and off-putting from a social perspective about my actual personality and then amping that up without empathy. I think one of the big things too that excited me about Gracie was just that uh, she had Disney in her background. And so she's been putting on that face for, for a while now. So she, she knows what it's like to kind of perform and have that perfect self projected and then you know when you step away from the lights it's just like you kind of go back to normal and so there is that kind of back and forth that we needed from Rebecca to go from that elevated perfection to what was actually kind of lurking beneath right yeah. right the anxiety Fantastic. of what do people expect of me mm -hmm. and then like like the, just taking a little too long to figure that out I think is sort of the hook of Rebecca Oh yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, let's see, uh, Topher just wants you guys to know, we just saw the movie, loved it. Uh, Gary has a, a statement for Clayton. Uh, your webcam lighting and setup being the best on the panel is a strong endorsement of your profession. Yeah, I was talking about your 
lighting game in your background game so uh i gotta show up <laughs> <laughs> oh here's a good one uh it's for for the group uh, let's talk about your guys favorite or, or the scariest uh, invasion movies uh you know what are, what are some of the best and scariest home invasion movies brandon the strangers that's a pretty good mm-hmm. one yeah that's a that's a scary one. Anytime you're in the domesticated place where you're supposed to be safe and it gets corrupted, it's it's always terrifying. So just having, you know, I remember Paranormal Activity seeing that in the theaters, and I went home, and you're just laying in bed, and you're just like, oh man, you know, like everything. I've got an alarm system, things are fine, I'm fine, but you still every creak you hear, all of a sudden it takes on a new life. So anything that just sort of perverts your sense of privacy it is is always terrifying to me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Gracie, what are your what favorite or what do you think are the scariest home invasion horror movies? I'm not coming up with anything. <laughs> Super host. Super host. Yeah. <laughs> Curtis, some of your uh, favorites? I'm trying to think. Like Mother was really good. Um, oh, yeah, that was good. Um, totally. like that. I'm trying to think. I mean, a classic like Panic Room is always is great, but it's less horror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Where, Still a good one. What about you, Clayton? Any films to shout out? Well, I would I would echo Brandon in uh, Strangers. That that movie was terrifying. I really like Don't Breathe. Yeah, Ooh, that, yeah. That, I had a crazy twist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, tense throughout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Performances um, for sure. You know, Superhost is on that list, of, sure, of course. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks for the question. Uh, here's uh, got got more questions for each of you uh let's see who hasn't had one recently uh here's one for curtis you're a producer on vhs 94 which is coming out october 6th also on shutter uh is there anything you can tell us about this project um there i i actually just saw the trailer which is being in the works and it's it's exciting pretty very excited to to be able to share that um yeah no i think it's it's really fun i think we we did some some really cool stuff with this one can't say too much yet, but uh, but it'll be. We have some news coming out soon. Fantastic, fantastic. We'll, we'll definitely be covering you on Dread Central, so can't wait to hear what it is. Uh, Clayton, was there a scene in Superhost that didn't look very complicated but was really tough to shoot? I've gotten this question a lot, and uh, it, the probably the hardest one was um, there's a shot of Sarah working on her laptop late at night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Brandon laughing no it, it was the daytime one we did it yeah no there, well there's a nighttime one too but yeah we did them both right yeah, yeah. anyways right. the camera the camera starts behind her it's a long dolly it comes up in front of her turns around faces her and it's just um the location the crew size it didn't really allow for a full-size camera dolly and we did discuss having one but it was it was quickly shot down because it's like there's no way that's going to be practical. Mm-hmm. So we had to work with a, a very tiny dolly, uh, a Dana dolly, and I had it on on the floor. And in order to get the camera to the right height, we had to ratchet strap apple boxes to the right height. And then the camera was on a little hi hat. It was very janky, um, <laughs> but hey, you know it, we got the shot. It, we got the job done. We were shooting it wide open. So the, the first AC Taylor had to just be on his game with the focus. And um, it took a couple t- takes, but we got it. And it's a great shot. Um, but yes, it, it looks pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was very difficult. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, look out for it. You got something to add, Gracie? Oh, I thought um, <laughs> the, uh, the, la- the ending, the last scene with the car when it, I'm supposed to be holding the camera mm-hmm. and also yeah. keys involved. Right. That was, uh, it looks, it looks like this, like what is supposed to be happening, but it was three people trying to make it happen. Yeah. Oh, she wow. Had, there was a lot, a lot of, of arms. With yeah. That. yeah. Um, that was really fun. interesting. If you haven't seen it yet, pay attention to that final scene because you just got some really, uh, some insight that's going to uh, expand your appreciation of but the filmmaking. The yeah the science of filmmaking mm-hmm. amazing gracie how you were able to set the camera down to perfectly okay. frame 
perfectly fit. She's a natural YouTuber. I mean, I just yeah. figured there was a, a, a blue X made from painter's tape, you know, and you just like. Yeah, you'd see it. it. Yeah, it'd be a, it was, yeah. you see everything in that shot. It goes yeah. for, a, that's like a three or it four minute no shot. Mark. Definitely no marks involved. Yeah. Wow. Couldn't be. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, here's another one for Gracie. Uh, what did you do to get into character, especially towards the end when things are unraveling? Um, I, I don't know, it's the same thing. You just like figure out what your character is thinking and then you think that instead of what you would be thinking plus like hitting your mark. Um, it's just like acting anything. Um, I will say getting into that murderous headspace was, um, less challenging than it wouldn't have been if we weren't staying in a hotel full of assholes like just like every day getting like going downstairs to get to work you're just like does, does humanity deserve to continue does it so really you just tapped in you you tapped into your uh existing desire to kill to commit murder for these a little, crazy not to commit murder humanity <laughs> doing it to itself like why put in the effort but yeah a little bit of that <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, uh, Brandon, we've got another one for you. Uh, were there any scenes that you wrote for Superhost that didn't make it into the final film? Uh, if so, can you talk about any of those here? There was um, earlier in the film, we actually shot it and everything, but we ended up reshooting it because I didn't, it, it made Claire look like too much of a, a bitch. Um, so we, we kind of softened the scene and rewrote it, but uh, it's basically when the upload is very like after the cat video is done uh, very early in the film and she goes out to the balcony and has her little moment and sort of confesses why she's upset to to teddy um that was the second version of the scene the first one was just her very kind of neurotically upset about the the upload speed and and teddy's trying to comfort her and he gives her a kiss and it was you know it was this this scene that just it it was too aggressive for her and at that moment in the script we just needed to soften her up because for the first 10 minutes of the film she's very like let's do this. We got to do this. She's very direct and driven. And it was just like, we need to let her be soft for a second, just to allow the audience into what she, why she is where she is. So in the script that that whole scene on the balcony didn't exist. We just sort of came up with it after we looked at the dailies on that. We were just like, ah, it's not, it's not right. Like we needed to soften her up and just to, yeah, we just need to get some more of who Claire was at that moment. So other than that, I mean, uh, some of the stuff on the screens would change, like uh, what she was looking at. But in general, what's on the page was was pretty much there. Actually, there was one other thing. Um, in the forest, there's a monologue by Gracie, and it was different until the. Or it, it was it was written one way, and then the morning of the shoot, Grace walks up to me. She's like, there, "This is wrong," and I was just like, "What do you mean?" She's like, "No, this isn't. This is giving away too much." And I read it. And I was just like holy crap, you're right. And so we sat at a picnic table and we rewrote the monologue for the scene. And it was just kind of me writing on a piece of paper with a pencil and we're like spitting it out to each other. And that's what's in the film. And it's way, I mean, the movie would be a lot worse if it was the original draft. Like I, I, I'm super lucky Gracie fixed that because <laughs> it's not good. This is wrong, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I no, love you, this story. It, it was, it's true though. And it wasn't like a bad way. You're just like, this isn't what I would do because you were so tapped in at that point that you were just like this, and you were right it's just something it was just a blind spot for me I was just like I wrote it I didn't think about it but um yeah when 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 I looked at it and really kind of what we had shot to date I was like oh wow this is way wrong and and you totally saved it so it's you know glad you stepped up and just said something that's why you get good actors because they're going to bring I, themselves to it you know and that um, you yeah. there's nothing I've only got one viewpoint she's got she's got other ones for that character and I needed those I love the story because it's, it's such a testament to the power of collaborative, you know, creativity, totally. you know, how you, you, you surround yourself with a good team, with talented people, you're open to suggestions, you end up creating something that's better than mm -hmm. anyone could have done on their own. Totally. Sounds like you're a great director to work with. Gracie, sounds like you're a, a, a producer, a director's dream. <laughs> you know, such a wonderful team you got here. Uh, really really fantastic stuff there, there's one thing i did want to ask that kind of goes along with the the question uh brandon it, for some reason when i'm watching the film i kept expecting at some point to see rebecca's lair i imagined rebecca had a lair did right. she was there something like that in a, in a draft earlier did you ever see her like watching on the ct I mean, cameras or anything ah uh, i how we show it so much better than that yeah, I mean, she's so eerie. She's, yeah, I mean, where we yeah, do the show true. where she is, which is creepy. Right. And, um, the um, 
I don't know. There was more to showing her like actual video footage because we had the cameras, right? So there was in an earlier draft, you saw what happened back then. And it was just an extra level that I didn't think the film needed to go to, like seeing her commit these things. Um, but that was about it. I mean, we... I wish that it was like, it would be fun to have a Rebecca led story where you could follow her journey. Cause she's kind of running in tandem with Claire and uh, Claire and Teddy's story. And she's doing her own kind of, you know, moving in and out of their lives and stuff like that. Like I would love to see the alternate universe where we actually get to follow that. But mm. I, I, you know, inevitably we only know what Teddy knows. And so, and, and Claire. So as long as they don't know the viewer, I don't think should know. So when we do see, we're finally, you know, it's a revelation for everybody. Uh, true that, true that. Uh, let's keep talking a little bit about Claire and Teddy, because like I mentioned before, you know, small cast, uh, but, but that meant that everyone had to go all out and totally commit. Mm -hmm. you, you can't have a, a Gracie and a Barbara and, not, you know, just any two random uh, actors who aren't going to like pull out amazing performances as well. And I think that uh, uh, Sarah Canning and Osric Ch Chow, Chow uh, yeah. just did some fantastic work. Uh, and, and, you know, Obviously, this question for Brandon, but it's also for everyone because, you know, you all worked on the film. Even you, Gracie, you have a perspective. Talk a little bit about this couple that you brought to the screen because they have a really unique relationship that's hard to kind of uh, put your finger on. Yeah, I mean, the hardest part is just having the handicap of having characters that are inevitable, like they're ultimately going to be unlikable because of who they are. Like, how do you make these, you, we've got a character that normally you would hate and you're going to love in Rebecca because of who she is. And then you've got these blogger types that are putting on this fake self. And then you, you're actually living with, like most of the movies spent with them being this down and like, you know, the, just them kind of figuring out how to get views and everything. So I, I think that's ultimately an unlikable position to be in. Like nobody likes that. Like you don't like the, you like, you like the, fa the fakeness, you like that. And so um, that was just something that we had to monitor the whole time was just like, make sure that they're at least a little likable so that the audience cares to get them to that point where the tables kind of turn a little bit. Um, and, you know, having Osric involved and he's just such a, he's such a sweet and innocent feeling guy to play off of Sarah, who's, who unfortunately has to play the character as kind of, she's the direct, you know, she's driven, she wants to win, she wants to get these views. So she has this kind of singular focus and it's not till later in the film that she realizes like, oh, you know what, this was a mistake. I've made mistakes and everything like that. But um, just having these two characters connect like that and, 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 and work the way that they do is just super important because they carry, you know, even though Rebecca's the star, they're still carrying the thrust of the film. Well, I think without them really being real and complex characters, mm -hmm. which is the stark contrast to how they present themselves on the internet, without that, I mean, like, no spoilers, but there's not blood in the first act of this movie. Like, right. And it, because they're able to commit to these characters so well, and like they're real human beings, like there's a grotesque element throughout this film. Like there's something that feels horroristic and like grotesque throughout because they've really done a good job of making these characters really real. Yeah, for real. Clayton, yeah. something to add? It was fun to watch them uh, bring these characters to life because we all know how it's going to end. But <laughs> to see Osric and to see Sarah just have these little moments where it makes you smile, makes you laugh a little bit. And it really helped, uh, like we we're like Brandon was saying, soften them up a little bit. And, you know, you, you do start to root for them a little bit um, because, yeah, you couldn't you didn't want to just hate them the whole time. You might hate some of the things they do, but ultimately you gotta you gotta root for them a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think, and I think the, it's in the writing, and it's definitely in the performances. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like the problems and that they have with each other as, as individuals, but in their relationship, end up really being the character flaws that justify their actions later in the movie in a way that is really satisfying. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what I love and what you kind of uh, were alluding to there, Gracie, uh, no one in this film is two-dimensional. Uh, no one in this film is a stereotype. There, there isn't the jock. There isn't the final girl. There isn't the, you know, typical slasher. Uh, no one in this film fits a conventional role that you can kind of sum up in one sentence. That's really what makes it a, a really rich and multifaceted viewing experience. Um, 
One other thing I kind of want to hit on, and again, this is for all of you, and, and maybe I'll let Curtis weigh in first since you've been kind of quiet. I noticed you being quiet down there. Uh, there's a lot of satire in Superhost, a, a lot of uh, social satire, uh, internet culture, uh, d doing it for the clicks, uh, you know, uh, reality versus perception, things like that. Uh, let, let's talk about the satirical elements of Superhost. I think, uh, yeah, Brandon and I obviously talk a lot about internet culture and have, have a lot of fun kind of bantering about what people are like online. Um, and so I think like, it was cool to see him branch out from kind of the, the more serious tone of, of Stillborn and Z, which I'm like, really, like, I, I really enjoy making those type of films too. But this felt very much like, like Brandon was kind of having fun with his voice and this was his personality kind of unfolding out on the script. So it was, it was cool to see him kind of playing with with these kind of different types of characters and having a lot more fun with them and not not going too serious and trying something a little bit different from, from his first two films. So I felt like it was it was cool to see kind of him come out through the page in terms of kind of that that fun side because Brandon's a very fun person to hang out with and he can be yeah. he, he keeps the this the energy on set very very funny and it's 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 a very fun set to kind of hang out on. So it was cool to see that kind of translate on the screen. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Brandon, anything to add about uh, what the film's message is about a uh, toxic internet culture and you know this uh, uh, YouTube-driven uh, creation uh, phenomenon we're seeing? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just kind of the whole every everything that you see online, whether it's it just, just everything someone posts, they're always posting the best version of that event, you know. I mean, you go to a concert, everyone's got their phones up. They're never going to look at that again. It's just, they're creating memories, fake memories through a video instead of actually just having the memory. And so, I mean, the big scene for me is, is when they're up on that hill and that whole sequence plays out because it's like a very, it's a very serious thing that's happening, but neither of them are clued in enough to be like, this is actually, you know, Sarah's completely coming at it from a one position. Uh, Teddy's coming from another and they're, they're, they're totally, it's, it should be an intimate moment, but it's totally ruined because both of them don't understand how to have a real moment. And so I think mm -hmm. it's just sort of, you know, it's just so many things. It's kind of the, the first reaction is get the camera out first, you know, get your phone, record this world star, all that stuff. It's just like, you know, there's just a lot of, it, it's, it's just kind of a weird fake fake culture that we have where everybody's yeah. just putting out their best self. And that's what Rebecca's kind of, coming to uh, disrupt. Yeah, well, it, it, it's almost like, and, and yeah, Rebecca, Gracie, it's almost like Rebecca's can't tell the difference between what's on the internet and what's real life. No, uh, no, and I think that's, that's what the film, I think that's what makes the film really wonderful and like the theme really strong is that what makes these two lead characters uh, funny and what makes them interesting is like like what is reality versus perception and then like what is funny about that and what should we criticize because YouTube is gross and then what is actually horrific about that what is like actually horrifying when trust is being violated because we care about how things are being photographed more than our actual perception of them and what do we lose when we like we're like not perceiving things ourselves we're thinking about documenting them mm -hmm. then you lose your instincts yeah, there's there's a lot of warning signs early on that could have easily been avoided, but you know they there's a reason why they're out there and they don't want to leave until they have what they need. So, it's just that you know just yeah your common sense gets diluted when you're when you're trying to you know ignore your common sense for the views kind of thing. Yeah, for real, for real. We're we're getting close to top of the hour. There's another uh, big thing that I have to talk about uh, before we start wrapping things up. Location, location, location. I mean, what it, when you have a basically a single setting uh, a film, you know that it's so important. And this uh, uh, location you guys had was so perfect for the story that you're telling. Where was that? Are there any fun stories connected to how you found the property? And you know, what are you guys' memories of, of working there? I mean, I could touch on the, the first part. I, I had actually written a script for another house up in the area. It's called Mount Charleston. It's like 25 minutes from Las Vegas. 
Um, and I had written the script for this place. It was much more modern, much more open concept. And the script was built for that. And then uh, the owner and I had been talking, everything, everything was cool until he just kind of ghosted me. And so I was just, you know, panicking. I didn't know what to do. There's, it's hard to get someone to rent your house or, for like a month so you can shoot a feature film there. And so I was kind of down and out about it. And this was end of or early 2020, it was before the pandemic hit. And then uh, uh, I reached out to a friend, uh, Chloe Churko, who their family has a place out there. And I was just like, hey, do you know anyone that would rent their house? And she's like, I'm here right now, here's some photos. And she's, I was just like, holy crap, those big windows and everything. I was just like, uh, wait right there, I'm on my way. So I just jumped in my car and drove up there and their whole family was up there and we were just talking about it. And talk they, I've been friends with them for like 14 years ever since I moved here, they're fellow Canadians. But uh, yeah, they were just like, yeah, sure, do it. Totally, just completely chill. And so I just took their the old script and just adapted it for their house. And I had to change some things and add new things, which was cool. But, um, you know, the story was the same. It was just sort of these textural elements that we got to update. But yeah, I mean, they were... It was insane. I mean, we 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 offered them an amount of money, and there's like half that's fine. And it was just like, okay, oh, I mean, we're such Canadians, a small budget. <laughs> yeah, Canadians looking out for each other. I love yeah, that. You know, pretty, Canadians pretty looking much. out for each other. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, uh, cinematographer Clayton, I'd love to hear you know about your experience working in this uh, great location. Well, yeah, I remember. Um, I remember seeing the first house Brandon had had chosen, and and I was excited. It looked really cool, but it it didn't have the character that this house that we ended up breaking up a bit Clayton. it was just it was perfect i mean it was perfect going into the house for the first time um because it just has so much character um and you know just floor to ceiling windows everywhere you look and and that that provided its own unique challenges but it also gave us a lot of opportunities uh to play with the light that came through those windows and um it just it, and it gave the house that like fishbowl effect and you always mm -hmm. and with the cameras everywhere and it just it felt like they're always being watched mm -hmm. from the outside in you know and absolutely um, yeah it was it was a fun house to shoot in and as far as i know we didn't break anything so that's always good too <laughs> yeah we're still friends <laughs> nice, with the owners nice. so we're yeah good. yeah so win-win uh, you use the word character to describe the house, you know, it's just obviously fitting, but you know, in, in this case, as is, uh, sometimes happens in a lot of haunted houses, home invasion films, the, the setting becomes a character in and of itself. And this, uh, char uh, this character with these open windows, windows being metaphors for eyes, and window to the soul, all these other eyes around in the form of these security cameras, a really great place. And it's got a, you know, it's so fortuitous how the first place fell through because you ended up with a, a location that really benefited the, yeah. the film and the story yeah. so wonderfully. Uh, sure. Listen, I, I'd love to talk to you guys for, for another hour. I've got, you know, other little, you know, notes, uh, things we could talk about. It, it is kind of time for us to wrap this up. Before we do, I want to go around and give everyone a chance to talk about what you're working on now because as exciting as it is, you know, to, to celebrate this one's release, you know, I, I know as someone with a, a toe in the industry that, you know, you always got something brewing because these things take uh, months and sometimes years to come to fruition. So, uh, Curtis, what are you working on these days? Yeah, we have, um, so we have VHS 94 coming out on the 6th of October. Um, and then I'm just prepping to actually leave in like three weeks. I'm heading overseas to direct my next one. So just basically in full on prep mode for that. Nice, nice. Well, can, can you give us some final thoughts on uh, Superhost and why uh, uh, our viewers should be excited to check it out if they haven't already? Yeah, absolutely. I think like it's just such a fun ride. I think if you're a fan of Stillborn and Z and you've seen any of stuff with Brandon's, you're, you're going to love this one. I think this is his best film yet, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm really excited to that it's finally out there and we can kind of share it with everyone. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Clayton, uh, what are you working on these days? Um, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm hanging in there. I've, I've been reading some scripts. And so I'm kind of in that stage where it's like, is this going to go? Is this going to happen? Um, hopefully I'll be able to say something soon, but there might be some big things on the horizon. We'll see. We'll certainly see. Um, and you know, as far as people watching Superhost, I think it's a fun movie, you know, it's very different and, um, you know just sit down it's very it's quick it moves quick and it does down, it. you know sit buckle up enjoy the ride because it's it's a really awesome character piece 
you know it really is it really yeah. is uh, congratulations on what you shot and uh you know if you're going to tantalize us with the, these projects in your future that means you have to follow up and let us know oh, when you can you know because we we're big fans of yours and we uh you know want to let our our community at Dread Central know about it. So uh, thank you so much thank for being you. here. Uh, uh, Gracie, what, what do you got going on these days? Oh, um, nothing in the Hollywood world that I can talk about right now. Um, you know, just writing and preparing my fall garden, which is exciting. Uh, <laughs> um, and I would say, uh, Superhost, watch it. It's, it's a fun, scary one. Um, I've watched it with my best friend and then she couldn't see me for like a day after. So... <laughs> And it's, I know we talked about how small the crew is. This movie, Clayton and Brandon, is just fucking beautiful. Like, just looks incredible. It's like, it's, I was amazed watching it. I, was like, I cannot believe how small this crew was and how absolutely beautiful it is. And I, I really hope that people like it. Uh, I, I know they will. I know they will. Uh, and, you know, you, 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 I want, just want to echo what you said. You know, it, it's small film. Uh, I know it's a small crew because you all told me so, but it doesn't look like it's lacking for anything. You know, it doesn't seem like you, you made a film with constraints. It seems like you made a really focused, lean, uh, funny as hell, scary, fun movie. Uh, and, and Gracie, yeah, Rebecca is just so fucking cool. Like, <laughs> what a fun character. And, you know, I can't wait to see you in the sequel, knock on wood. Thank yeah, you so fun. much for being here tonight. Uh, Brandon, uh I'm gonna end with you uh, same questions what are you working on these days um kurt's got his thing that i'm i'm helping produce on he's going to be heading out there soon and I'll, I'll try and do as much as i can from the ground over here because i've got three kids i can't travel overseas for for his film but uh i might actually be going overseas as well around the same time to direct a film that uh, i i'm just sort of in the talks with uh um for finances and stuff like that but the script's cool i wrote it with my brother me and him have started writing we've we've got a few scripts done now which has been really fun um but we've kind of just he's just sort of like a monster at writing he'll just sit down and churn out pages which is something i struggle with so it's been fun to partner up with him um yeah i don't know it's it's going to be one of those things where there is multiple projects that can happen um it's just like which one's going to pop next uh, i don't know uh, but I'm hopeful that I'll be on set this year because it's always a bummer when you when a year passes and you just go, oh, man, I didn't shoot something. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this was definitely the fastest from shooting to release that I've ever done. But uh, that was pretty sweet. I liked having kind of like one year shoot, edit, done. Let's move on to the next one. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully I'm out. But uh, as far as why well, whatever you, you end up, whatever you end up doing next, uh, we're going to be really excited to see. So like cool. I said, with, with Clayton and everyone else, uh, let us know when sure. you know, because we, we would love to, to let our community know. And yeah, fi final words on a super host and why people should check it out if they haven't already, just as soon as we wrap. Uh, I think it's just a different kind of horror movie. It's not going for the dark and make you feel crappy. It's, it is fun. And even though it is, it does go to some really dark places, uh, it is strangely uplifting at the end, you know, when, when everything is over, even though there's been some carnage, it's still just like, <laughs> It, you, you still feel happy about it and that was the goal going in was to make you know to make you care for someone crazy and you know with with gracie's great uh performance i think we did that yeah i think you did too and i think you, you hit on something you hit on something else it's a fun film it's a good film for right now you know mm -hmm. you, things are crazy you know things are uncertain go watch superhost because you're gonna you're gonna just buckle up and have a good time and you know, some great real great escapism real fun, exciting horror flick. It's just been a, an absolute pleasure to be with y'all here tonight. Superhost streaming now on Shudder. If you needed another reason, get Shudder now. They've usually got some great uh, sign-up deals. You probably get the first three months for free. Uh, Superhost, fantastic film. It's been an absolute honor to be here with the writer, director, cinematographer, producer, and star of that film. Uh, thank you all for, for joining us. Uh, thank you to my team at Dread Central for their support. Come check us out in a week or so for another episode of Dissecting Horror. In the meantime, have a great evening, y'all. Thanks. Good night. Thanks, Josh.